Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk a little bit more about writing. Today, I want to mention some of the most bizarre writing advice I've ever heard of, and I've heard of it multiple times. I've had multiple people ask me my opinion of it, whether it's in the YouTube comments or on Twitter or on email, all over the place, people are asking me about this. And it's this idea that you should write your main character genderless or to have an uncertain gender, meaning um, you can't tell whether they're male or female. Now, this is really a bizarre piece of writing advice. I don't know who's out there giving this and what the hell they're thinking. Presumably, you would think they would know something about writing to give this advice out, um, but they don't. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to explain that. Um, now, for me, this seems like a technical a technical exercise that I would actually be interested in doing. Like, can I write a story where we don't know whether the character is male or female and maybe we reveal it at the end? That'd be like a little challenge for a short story. Or are we writing a science fiction story in the future where there's no male or female, where the concept of different sexes doesn't exist? You know, people have done that before in the past. Or are we writing a piece of postmodern literature where we're removing all pronouns for the sake of some political idea or to just see what effect it has on the reader. Those are the things I think about when I'm like avoiding mentioning the sex of the, the main character. But uh, when I ask about why you on earth you would want to do this, um, something that no genre writer ever did, right? Uh, the answer was so that the reader can project onto the character whatever gender they want, whatever sex they want. So they the reader could imagine them as male or female. This is also really bizarre to me, and maybe it's indicative of like uh, a greater frequency of autism or something in the general population or in audiences that they're starting to assert weird preferences like this. Um, the truth is that male or female is such a deep part of who we are as human beings. Removing it from a character is going to make a character that by necessity ends up as a piece of gray goop with no specific traits. Um, it would be really an ill-defined character because there's so much that flows out of being a man or a woman. Uh, what's possible for you to do physically and not possible for you to do physically. I can't have children, for instance. Um, what is possible for you in a culture? The way the culture uh, approaches each different sex, male or female, matters a lot and therefore uh, it changes the way that people act. Men and women act different from each other. They do think different from each other on on average and um, there's just a lot that goes into being male or female. It's something that's very deep about us. It's part of the the, the lowest and most important part of our identity. Um, you know, God created the male or female. It's like one of the very first things in the Bible is the separation of the sexes. And in fact, not to get political, but one of the reasons that the whole gender ideology thing and trans thing is big is because that identity is really important. Being male or female really matters to people. So why would you not have that as part of your character? That's a that's a deep and important part of who the character is. It's going to affect their motivations. It's going to affect everything about them. Now, there's another thing here too, which is that will the reader stop reading if the character is not the same sex as them or the sex that they want to read about? And for 99.9% .9 of people, that's not true. So people who like to read, for instance, science fiction will not stop reading the science fiction book because the main character is male or female and they happen to be the opposite of that or they uh, you know, are preferring male protagonist or female protagonist or something like that. I don't know any reader who's ever closed a book because they didn't like whether the character was male or female. I, I guess I shouldn't say that. I've had people insinuate stuff like that in comments that they weren't going to read books that had female main characters. Well, you're not going to read some of my books. Sorry. You know, but your typical reader, I've never had a reader say like, you know, not want to read Water of Awakening or hate Water of Awakening because the main character is female. I don't know too many fantasy readers, and it's a pretty male heavy audience who don't uh, don't like the Mistborn series because the main character is female. Likewise, um, Harry Potter has a pretty female heavy readership and they seem to not mind that the main character is male. They don't get angry that uh, everything focuses on Harry Potter and they're flipping pages to get to Hermione or something because they need to have a character that's exactly like them. That's another part of the human, um, I guess, being human 
is knowing that other people are different from you and being able to recognize the humanity in other people that are different from you. So we're not just different male or female. We have different ethnicities. We come from different places. We speak different languages, and yet we're all human. This is a basic part of humanity as well as being able to understand the theory of mind, a mature theory of mind will know that other people have minds of their own, uh, own and those minds uh, think differently from yours. And you can still get to know them, you can still appreciate them, and you can still like them if they don't think exactly the way that you think if they are somehow different from you. And in fact, I think that's a big appeal to fiction. One of the reasons that you're reading fiction is to read about people, places, and times that are not the where you live and the people you interact with and the people you know. Uh, one of the fun things about reading about a character is that character is not you. It's a different and unique character, and it's not like maybe not like any person that you know. Uh, so the big appeal to fiction is being able to see all the different uh, shades and angles of humanity within the characters. Um, so robbing a main character of uh, their sex is uh, robbing the reader of one of the main experiences that they want out of fiction. This is definitely not a good idea if you're trying to sell stories to the vast majority of people who want to read those stories. Instead, I, one of the reasons I think this advice is just bizarre and terrible is that you are going to create a huge technical challenge. I mentioned that like I would get behind doing this just as a weird technical challenge to see if you could successfully do it and what kind of effect it would have on the reader. Again, kind of like a postmodern approach to it. Um, you know, so we're going to write without any pronouns. But if you actually did this within regular genre fiction, and you had a character that was they instead of she or her or he, right? Instead of using regular gendered pronouns. That's the only part of the English language that's gendered, by the way, are the pronouns versus something like Latin where you have genders for every word um, or Spanish that has two genders for pretty much every word. Latin had three. Wow. You know, and some languages have genders that are like rough and smooth, have nothing to do with masculine and feminine, by the way. So the word gender, just as a reminder, most of you know this already, it's a linguistic term that has nothing to do with sex. Sex is really the more appropriate term. Um, but anyway, if you're going to be using the plural they as a neuter, um, as a neuter pronoun, the entire book, it's going to get really annoying to any sufficiently experienced reader. Any reader who's read a, read a lot of books is going to be like, why do you keep calling this person they? Are they male or female? What is wrong with you? Hello, cat. Um, so I don't think it'll turn out well for most readers to have to do they, and it's going to create a big technical challenge for you. Maybe you're going to remove all gendered pronouns. No he or she at all. Only they. Well, it's going to get real confusing when you have more than two characters in any scene or more than one character because every character will be they. Uh, I know this from writing, say, fight scenes with two men is that they're both he and him. So using the pronouns within a single paragraph starts to become cumbersome. He did this to him. Well, sometimes we have to use their proper name. So you're going to be seeing a lot of proper names to try to avoid confusion. Or you're just going to confuse the reader like, which they is this they? Which them is this them? It's a lot easier if you're able to just use regular pronouns and approach it from a regular technical manner to produce a genre fiction story. Like I said, if you're trying to make some kind of weird exercise, that's a different thing. But to me, that's not where their advice, that advice is coming from. That advice is coming from a place of like, you should make this story for reasons for the reasons that are related to the reader for reasons of your success no it won't make you successful and it won't gain you new readers um, maybe there's you know this advice is indicative of some like increase in a, a strange mental outlook among people in our society uh, like some i don't know some variant of something like some kind of autism or something like that where people need the character to be them uh, but that's not going to be the majority of readers even now they're not going to need the character to be them they don't need you know they're happy if they're fantasizing about a character they're happy to fantasize about being that character not needing that character to be them um, so projecting sex or projecting the self on a character that's not something normal readers do and that's a weird thing to do actually um, that's not something that normal people that's not the way normal people interact with fiction at all in fact what they like about fiction is that the characters are different and interesting and not like them not like oh he's so like me no it's like this guy's not like me that's what makes him interesting conan is not like me that's why i like him right it's, he's a different kind of character you know uh uh, all any character that I'm reading about is not like me. I wrote female characters. Obviously, they're not like the author. They're different characters from me and probably different characters from you, the reader. So 
Anyway, that's my advice on that advice. It's really bizarre and strange advice. I don't recommend you do it. Just write in the normal, the normal established style for your genre. Don't be doing extra crazy things unless it's part of some special way that you're constructing a special story like imagining a science fiction story where nobody has sex where there's no male or female anymore like the female man or something um if you're imagining a weird alien society where they have 20 different sexes okay go for it right uh, but that's that's a, like a special case this kind of advice trying to be applied to like isekai if you're gonna write isekai fiction no, your character should have a, a sex associated with him or her, and that is going to be part of what informs what the character is possible, what, what's possible for the character, the way they view things, their attitudes. Male and female is a really important part of what of who and what the character is. Just as important as their ethnicity or where they're from, uh, what culture they come from, what their profession is. All of those things make the character the character. So you're just like cutting out a huge part of basic characterization in order to supposedly serve a tiny minority of people that probably don't care anyway and would probably read your story regardless of whether the main character was male or female if it was well written. So keep that in mind and I'll see you all next time. Have a great, great day. Peace out.